Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor S.P. Singh from Faculty of Management Studies, Gurukul Kangri University, Haridwar. Today we are going to study Module 9 on Processing of Data. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the nature of processing of data, understand the field work validation, comprehend the data editing, understand the coding of data, become aware of the classification and tabulation of data. After the data has been collected, it needs processing and analyzing according to framework laid down for the purpose at the time of designing the research plan. This is essential for a scientific study and for ensuring all relevant data is obtained for making envisaged comparisons and analysis. Thus, Processing implies editing, coding, classification, and tabulation of collected data to render them amenable to analysis. The data analysis refers to the computation of specified measures along with looking for relationships existing among data groups. Thus, relationships or differences that support or conflict with original or new hypothesis should be subjected to statistical tests of significance to determine the validity with which data can be said to indicate any conclusions. Analysis of data involves a number of closely related operations performed with the purpose of summarizing the collected data and organizing these in a way that they answer the research questions. Data editing. Editing of data consists of a process of investigating the collected raw data, especially in surveys, to detect errors and omissions and to correct these when possible. While carrying out the editing, the researcher needs to ensure that the data obtained is complete in all respects, is consistent with other facts gathered, is accurate in terms of information recorded and responses sought. The responses are in the instructed format, uniformly entered, as completed as possible and have been well arranged to facilitate coding and tabulation. To ensure that data screening and cleaning, which is essentially the requirement of the editing process, has been carried out, the researcher needs to carry out the process at two levels, at the field editing and central editing. Field editing. In the field editing, the investigator evaluates the reporting form for the evaluation of the reporting forms by the investigator for entirely finishing all written in abbreviated form while recording the responses. This sort of editing is essential as the individual writing often can be difficult to read. The field editing need be carried out soon after the interview. While performing field editing, the investigator must control him from simply guessing what the respondent would have said if the question had been asked. Self-interviewing has no space in quality research. In large projects, the field supervisor is responsible for the field editing review and to validate the field results. This normally means re-interview of some percentage of respondents 
at least on some questions. Several commercial research firms would like to recontact about 10% of the respondents. Central editing takes place at the time all completed forms have been returned to the office. This sort of editing implies a single editor in case of a small study and a team of editors for a large inquiry carried out a thorough editing. Editors may rectify the evident errors such as an entry in the wrong space and time. In case of not appropriate or missing replies, the editor determines the proper answer in the light of the other information provided in the schedule. Sometimes the clarification may be sought from the respondent. The editor must delete the answer if the same is inappropriate and he has no basis to determine the correct answer or the response. In such a case, an editing entry of no answer is needed. Coding is the process of allocating numerals or other symbols to replies so that responses can be reduced to a restricted number of categories or classes which should be suitable to the research problem under study. They must also have the characteristic that there must be a class for every data item and also that of mutual exclusively meaning that a particular answer can be put in one and only one cell in a given category set. Another guiding principle is that of unit dimensionality which means that every class is explained in terms of only one concept. Coding is essential for efficient analysis. It may reduce various replies to a small number of classes containing the critical information analysis requires. Coding decisions need be taken at the time of designing the questionnaire, making it possible to pre-code the questionnaire choices and assist for computer tabulation. However, coding errors should be eliminated or reduced to the minimum level. The process of coding involves codebook formulation, coding of closed-ended structured questionnaires, coding open-ended structured questionnaires. Classification and tabulation of data. Classification. Majority of research studies result in a big volume of raw data which ought be lowered down into homogeneous groups in order to get meaningful relationships. This fact requires classification of data in groups or classes on the basis of general characteristics. Data with a general characteristic are put in one class and in this way the entire data get categorized into a number of groups or classes. Classification can be one of the two types depending upon the nature of the phenomena involved. Data are classified based on usual characteristics into descriptive or numerical. Descriptive characteristics means Qualitative phenomena unable to be measured quantitatively, only their presence or absence in an individual item can be taken note of. Data obtained this way based on certain attributes are known as statistics of attributes and their classification. Classification according to class intervals. The numerical characteristics denote quantitative phenomena measured with the help of some statistical units. 
data regarding income, production, age, weight, etc. fall in this category. Such data are called as statistics of variables and are categorized based on class intervals. For instance, persons with incomes from rupees 201 to rupees 400 form one group. Those with incomes from 401 to 600 form another group and so on. This way the complete data may be divided into a number of groups or class intervals. Each group of class interval thus has an upper and a lower limit known as class limits. The difference between the two class limits is called class magnitude. There may be classes with equal or unequal magnitudes. The number of items occurring in a given class is the frequency of the class. All the classes with their respective frequencies taken together in the form of a table are known as group frequency distribution. Once the data has been cleaned and entered in a tabular form, the researcher is advised to do a preliminary data exploration in order to assess the expected trends of the findings. Sometimes these indicative trends may demonstrate that the data collection or instrument design is faulty and needs some corrections. Thus, before one goes about testing the formulated hypothesis, one carries out a loosely structured exploration. Most of the exploration is done on the basis of the graphical and visual display of the data patterns that seem to be emerging. Exploratory data analysis can be performed with the help of bar and pie charts, histogram and stem and left displays. Friends, in this module you have studied the nature of processing of data, the fieldwork validation, the data editing, the coding of data, the classification and tabulation of data. Thanks for visiting EPG Partshala.